Hello and welcome to building Java desktop applications. I'm John McNeil and in today's video what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at all the libraries and tools we need to put in place to enable our Java applications to speak. So to give a quick recap of what we're going to be looking to do we want to be able to convert some text into sound much like this anyone who has never made a mistake has never tried anything new okay um, there was a previous video showing you about this application and we're on the road to building this but first we've got to make sure everything's in place and that's what this video is about so before we get started what we want to do is cover off the things we're going to need to download to add into our project. These are external dependencies. Um, so take a look and if you're happy to download these things and install them on your machine, all well and good. If not, then this probably isn't for you. So first off, first off we're going to use a Java speech synthesizer um, known as Free TTS. So that's the first thing we're going to download. So Free TTS and we're looking for the SourceForge IO domain, this one here. And then uh, we're going to go with download and installing, I think. And then the download link. That takes us over to SourceForge. We want free TTS and then it's version 1.2.2 we're using. So we're going to go into that folder there. And we just want the binary. We don't you don't want any of the source files and things like that. You can if you're interested, but we only need the binary. So that's the only one we need. Um, that'll start downloading in a minute. The other thing we are going to need is we are going to be using some voices from the MBROLA um, project. <coughs> it just gives us a greater um, variety of voices that we can use, which you'll see in a second. So to get that, we will just put in MBROLA, which hopefully will just... I've missed the B off, haven't I? MBROLA and we want this is um, a project um, done within the academia so I think the original base of the project was done by Edinburgh University or Scottish University anyway and then there was a Belgian university that came along and they built on top of that a whole load of voices and things like that and tools but um, basically this comes out of the academic world it's very old so it's 2001 I think is round about the time it kicked off 2009 was the last time it was updated um, but it's freely available for us to use and it's a great way to just get us started and, and get us used to using this sort of technology so um, yeah we want the uh, TCTS FPMS Ac Academic BE for Belgium domain and then click on the download link on the left hand side and then where it says what you will have to copy there's a link in the first line that says uh, MBRLA binary and voices you click on that and we will actually want the PC DOS version I'm using a Windows based machine for this work obviously if you're using a Linux or a Macintosh or something like that then you need to go for one of those options um, which I haven't tried so um, you'll have to see how you get on but anyway if you're on a Windows machine you can use the DOS version that will download and if you scroll down below, below, below there you'll see that there are some various languages um, I'll mention to you now I haven't come across anybody who has managed to get the British English voice the EN1 voice to work from here but we're going to use today this US1 voice uh, the US2 voice and the USV3 voice So. With all of those things downloaded, that's all the downloading done. Next, 
we're going to switch to our IDE and start building up a project to allow us just to prove we can get all this stuff inserted and up and running and, and working in its base um, in a basic way. So I'm using Eclipse, you can use any IDE that you want. It's all much for muchness. We're just doing a basic Java project, even though the example I saw showed you earlier was um, was JavaFX. For the time being, we're just going to use a basic bog standard Java project. I'm using version 1.8. Anything above 1.4 is okay. I think 1.4 is okay as well. First thing we want to do, which I'd forgotten to do last time, um, I was trying to do this, is we need to install the libraries. So we're going to start off by just installing the libraries we got from the free TTS um, example. So I've opened up the free TTS zip file, um, and in there is a folder called free TTS 1.2. If you go into there, there'll be a lib folder. If we go into there, we'll see a whole load of jar files. Now, we don't need all of these. What we need to do is select the ones we do need. And they are um, the CMU US Cal. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to... Um, the easiest way to do this is just export your zip file to your hard drive somewhere and then go into there and copy the files and we'll paste them in. That's the easiest way to do it. So you want the CMU US Cal file, you want the CMU LEX file, you want the ENUS file, you want the free TTS file and the free TTS JS API 10 file. So they're the ones you want. And then you want to go over to your IDE and you want to go to the Java build path for your project and you want to add external jars. Um, and I've already got mine here so there's the cow there's the cow, there's the CM UELX, the ENUS, the free TTS and the JS API. So I'll just apply those and that's that and we can see them here as our reference libraries. So next thing to do is to build a new class. Um, So I'll make up some sort of package. Uh, speech one, because I'm clearly going to have another one after this. Um, so if I just do all of that, I've created a main. I'm, I'm going to just remove the main for the moment. What I will do is I will paste in here the code, and I will then explain it not that it takes much explanation because it's fairly straightforward code but um, for those who need maybe a little more help and support so first thing I've got is a whole load of errors because I'm referencing classes that are in those external libraries so I just need to import them so the voice you can see is in com.sun.speech.free tts so just import that import the voice manager as well um, and that's got rid of all of our errors. And I'll just save that. So what we're going to do is we're going to have an instance of the voice manager, which is the bit that obviously manages the voices in free TTS, and we're going to call that to get an instance. So you don't create an instance of the class, you allow the voice manager class to create an instance on your behalf and pass you pass it to you. And that way it involves it makes sure that there's only ever one instance of voice manager created and lots of people can then make use of the same instance um, and then we call the get voices which gives us a collection of voices that the engine 
is all the voice manager is, avail is aware of and then we iterate through those voices and we just print out the name this this get name down here and this get description here so that we can see what we've got um, so what should happen now is I should be able to run this which we'll do and down the bottom it should come out with all the voices it knows about and that surprised me a little but there you are it has done that so we've got our free TTS installed and it can find things it can find some voices that we can now utilize so that's step number one but you will notice there is a thing here about MBROLA voices aren't available it will not use them because it cannot find them that's the next thing we're going to sort out the other download we had was um, the MBROLA um, zip file I think it was a zip file that we downloaded and we now need to do something with that in order to be able to get this get those voices available to us so what we have here is the zip file for the MBR302A um, sorry the 301D file that we downloaded and in here we've got an executable file and then we've got another executable file um, the one we want to use is the first one so what you need to do is you need to store this somewhere on your drive take it out of the zip file and put it in the drive now I recommend putting it somewhere easy to find so when I did mine I created a directory off my C drive um, just called MBROLA and then put this executable file directly in there so what I've got here is um, I've got a folder called MBROLA off my C drive and there's my executable file so that's the first part the next bit obviously is we need to take those voices we had and install them so let's take a look at that now each voice came in a zip file and each zip file has a folder with the first two letters the, the first three characters of the file name as also the folder name so this is the US one voice and if you open it up you'll see that there is the details of the voice and some other bits and pieces all you need to do is just export this whole US one folder into your wherever into the location of wherever you put your executable file so what you now end up with is you've got I've got my US 1, my US 2 um, I've actually stripped out all the I've just left the big file part in there I've stripped out all the other files in there oh, well not on this one I've left them in here however all, right, um, all you need is the large file in there because that's the, the one that has all the voice details so with that in place we can now go back to our IDE and you'll see here we had this system property um, is undefined that's what we're going to try and get rid of okay and we're going to do that now we've installed everything on our hard drive we need to make one small change to our um, one small change to our code base so um, just before we get going we need to set as it says here we need to set a system property so we're going to set our system property mbrola.base which is what it refers to there and we're going to set it to wherever you located your executable file so if you picked a nice simple path like I have don't forget to have double backslash to escape the backslash um, you won't have to type very much if you've put it in a big deep thing then you will have to um, point it in the right path so with that done we can just save that and press run and what we should see is we one we should see this error message disappear and two we should see another three voices turn up the US 1 2 and 3 so let's see what we get there we are there's no error message and we've now got voices 1 2 and 3 so that's very good so what we're going to do next is we're going to make some sound 
because this has all been about trying to get text into sound that's what it's all about so that's what we're going to do next so I'm going to get rid of this this looping through because we've found the voices we know what the voices are now um, you may have to make a note of them so that you can remember what they are um, I've cheated a little I've got a note somewhere else so I'm going to get rid of all of that and now what I'm going to do is I really didn't need to get the voices now um, but I'm going to create a voice object and I'm going to call the voice manager and ask for the Kevin voice which is one of the voices in the list below um, I've commented out one of the MBRLA voices there which we'll do in a minute then I'm going to allocate that voice then I've got some text here believe in yourself you are braver than you think more talented than you know and capable of more than you imagine um, that's what it's going to say and then we're going to deallocate the voice and the pro project will come to an end so that's what it's going to do so let's save that and give it a whirl believe in yourself you are braver than you think more talented than you know and capable of more than you imagine so that was it using voice 1. If we go to voice 3 Believe in yourself you are braver than you think more talented than you know and capable of more than you imagine. That's voice 3. So as you can see the um, MBROLA voices are a little more refined than the basic ones which is why it was worth going to this trouble to put them in um, but there we are we've got some speech working in our application and that was all we really wanted to do what we've done is we've written a little basic Java application that just takes some text we've hard coded in our application and speaks it now we can move on from there and take a look at building our Java FX um, speech tester application that we showed you at the beginning of this file so that will follow shortly. Hope you've enjoyed this and um, keep a lookout for the, the next in this series on text-to-speech. Thank you very much for watching. This has been Building Java Desktop Applications and I'm John McNeil.